So hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial from IJ Apps. We are going to use the app we created in the first video and make some changes to it. Specifically, the new app will have a button which when pressed will create a small message called a toast saying that the button was clicked. Also, each time the button is clicked, the text being displayed on the screen will change. So if you haven't already gone through the first video to create the app, um, please go and take a look there. <clears throat> but anyways, let's get started now. And then over here, I have my uh, mainactivity.xml file open. And if you don't already have it open, once again, you can go to app, um, app, res, layout, and then it's right over there. Or another thing you can do is control shift N, and then you can see the file, you can enter a file name and search it up. So activity main, yeah. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is change this constrained layout to a relative layout. And what the relative layout allows us to do is it allows us to specify the positions of elements in relation to other elements. So you can think of uh, layouts as being containers for UI elements. So as a relative layout, we can say that, um, that we want our text to be above our image. And I'm going to go on ahead and delete this because this has to do with the constraint layout, which we don't have anymore. So uh, let's go and we just deleted those lines. So as you can see, we are left with lines beginning with Android. And there are two options that we can have, app or Android, if you remember over here, app or Android. And what the app one is, uh, and the Android one is for is it's used for attributes coming from the Android SDK, while the app is used for attributes coming from an external library that you may be using. And now we can change those attributes um, so that we can change the appearance of our text. For example, we can do something like Android text size and then set it to 25 SP. So uh, S, the P stands for pixels and the S means that it's scaled. So based on the user's preference for um, text size that they have in settings, it'll adjust it accordingly. And I can even say something like Android text color and then we provide the hexadecimal column. So, um, yep, and you, as you can see here, it popped up. So you can even click on that and then change it to whatever you want. I'll choose like a darker red and you could choose. And there are a bunch of other things you can do like Android margin and then Android um, uh, padding and other things like that. We'll come to that later. Now what I want to do is I want to create our button and we're going to make it right below our text view. Um, so we're going to say button and then you can see you can, uh, it's providing suggestion. We can hit enter. And then for the width, it's basically um, what it means by match parent is it's going to match the parent, the, the container that it's in, which is in this case the relative layout, which is matching the, the width of the screen and the height of the screen. So if we do layout height and we say match parent, it's going to make the button fill up the whole screen um, height wise. We don't, don't want that. We just want it to wrap the content, like the text that we're putting in our button. And that's about it. So that's what we're going to say wrap content. And then another important thing that we should do, like one of the really important things, that way we can um, identify a UI element from XML in Java is to provide an ID to that element. So we can say Android ID, and you say at plus ID slash, and then you, we can say text. And the reason that this is important is because that we can then go to our main activity.java, and then we can create a text view object by typing text view. Uh, and then we can say um, text. And then over here in our on create, which is run when our, which is um, runs when our app is launched, we can type in text equals find view by, and then we have to provide the ID. So it's going to be r dot id dot text, which is the ID that we provided here. So now we can do actions with this object because we provided the ID that we're using in the XML. And similarly, we're going to give this button the ID, and we're going to say button because it's btn. And I'm going to come to main activity or Java and I'm going to say button BTN. Okay, and as you can see, we had to import it. So a, a trick to importing it is going on the red, um, this, the word that's in red and it hitting alt enter import class and that automatically imports it for us. And similarly, we're going to do button equals find view by ID or ID dot BTN. Okay, so that's good and all. But now what we want to do is, let's say we want to have our text centered in the center of the page. So what we're going to say is Android, center, in layout, center, and parent. 
And because this is a relative layout, this option is available to us. For example, if we were to use our constrained layout from earlier, we wouldn't be able to do Android layout center and parent. But because we're using the relative layout, we can specify its position in relation to other objects. So we're saying uh, it's going to be in the uh, center of the parent. And then over here, we want our button to be below this text view that we have here. So that's where we're going to type Android layout below. You can also type below and hit enter. And then we're going to provide the ID of the element that we want it to be below. So it's going to be text because we want it to be below our text. And then to provide some spacing between them, we can say margin top, hit enter. And we can say something like 10, uh, 15 SP. Okay, that's good. And then we should also set the text of our button. That way it has something to display. So you can say Android text equals, and you can say click me. Okay. So now I'm just going to go ahead and run this on my phone. And that way we can see what the app looks like. You can do this if you want, but we'll still be making more changes to it. Okay, so it's just launching the application. It looks like I have to reconnect. Um, so you can wait for that. Okay, and here we have our app. And as we can see, it says Hello World, and it's in the center of our page. Um, but another thing that we forgot to do was center the button as well. Click me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And it's very easy to do. You just have to say Android layout, center, horizontal. I'm going to set that to true. And another thing that you may have noticed is, let me just move this to the side. Over here, we said click me, and only the C and the M are capital. Yet in the button, everything is capital. So if you don't want to do that, um, by default, it's set to true, but what you have to do is text, all caps, and you have to set it to false, because by default, it's set to true for buttons. So now if we were to update that, we'd be able to see the change, and um, I'll get to that part. Yep, so I just uh, administered the change, and here you can see it says hello world, and it clicked me right underneath. And we may want to increase the text size, so under text size, equals, um, I'm thinking we can actually make it larger since we have so little, uh, very few things on our page. So you can say like something like 24 SP. And then we can even increase this to maybe 29 SP. Okay, but now let's start um, going into the Java part of it and providing the functionality. Because right now, our, it looks decent. If we're not making like a killer app or anything, we're just making a basic app and I'm just trying to demonstrate how to use a button and a text view. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and set an on-click listener for this button to detect when it's pressed. That way when it's pressed, we can change the text um, that's being displayed. So I'm going to go ahead and type in btn.set on-click listener and you can see it's auto-completing, so I'm going to hit enter. And you're going to type a new view and again, it's going to auto-complete for you, so there it is. And now what we want to do is if the user clicks it, if the user clicks the button, we want to display one text. If they click it again, we want to display something else. If they click it again, we want to display the first text. And we just want to keep on alternating between the two texts. So what we can do is we can have something like um, string text one equals um, this is a basic app and you can say string text two equals subscribe to this channel so then now what we can do is we can say um now we need a variable to count whether we should display text one or text two so we can have a boolean boolean display i'm going to set it to false so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in, in the button dot text um, set on click listener, which is going to be triggered when the button is clicked. I'm going to say if display, then I'm going to say uh, oh you can see it, it needs to um, variable displays access from an inner class um, needs to be declared final. That can easily be solved by just taking this code and putting it here. That we has global scope, and then you can see it disappeared. The problem disappeared. And now we're going to type in if display. Um, we're going to say uh, text, which, which is our text view again. We're going to say text dot set text. And you can see here. And then we're going to say set it to text uh, two. Else text dot set text text one. 
It seems I should do the same with these two because over here you can see it cannot be accessed from an inner class. So sorry about that, but we can easily fix that by just moving it there. And now we have this code which is going to work. When you click the button, it's going to... Oh wait, I actually forgot something. So what we want to do is if the display is true, after we set the text, we want to set it to false. That way next time we'll display something else. And over here, we want to set it to true. So now when it's clicked, it should display one text and when it's clicked, it should um, display another and it should basically alternate between those two. And then we can check that now. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to work on the toast because it'll take very little time. Usually I like to have a function called uh, toast, uh, make toast, where I provide a string and I'll make a toast. And you'll see what a toast is in a couple of, um, in like in a minute or so. But remember when you were enabling developer options and it said that you are a de developer now? That was basically a toast. It's a small black box that pops up from the bottom of the screen and disappears in two or four seconds. So I'm going to say private void make toast string s. I'm going to say toast.make text. I'm going to have to provide it the context of the application. So I'm going to say get application context. Then I'm going to have to provide it the te um, text. And since I'm making a function, I'm just going to say s, which is going to be our text. And I have to specify the length. So it's either toast.length short, which is two seconds, or toast.length long. In this case, I'm just gonna go with the short one. Um, and then now we have to do dot show. That way the toast is displayed. So if you wanted, you could have actually like had a toast variable and then stored um, this part over here. And then later you could have used that variable and then done like variable dot show. But we can just do it in one line. It's quicker that way. Okay, so now that we have that, Let's go to our button, and when the button's clicked, we're gonna make a toast saying that the button was clicked. So say, button clicked, okay? And now we can run this on our device. So make sure you have it connected via USB, and you've enabled de developer options. If you need help with that, you can view my first video where I covered that in, um, in detail. So now I have the app open over here, and it says here, click me, I'm gonna click it. Um, yes, so you can see it says button clicked and it says, says subscribe to this channel. I'm going to click it again and this time the uh, text changed. So I can keep on pressing it and the text will change like that. So that's pretty cool. And um, as an added bonus, what we're going to do now is we're also going to change the color of the button when it's pressed. And I'm going to make another video on colors and how to set them programmatically because that's pretty cool. Uh, but for now, I'll just do something very basic. So what I'm going to do is when the button is clicked over here, when I'm displaying text over text two, I'm going to say button dot set background co um, color, and then I'm going to say color dot parse color, and I'm going to provide um, a hexadecimal code. So I'm just going to say like f zero 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 zero, okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing essentially for. Um, when, it tech, when I'm displaying text one, except I'm going to change it to maybe blue. So I'm going to set that RGB. So I'm going to set that to F. And now I can run this again. So the colors that I chose weren't really that great. So I changed the um, hexadecimal codes and you can do that as well because it's appearing too dark. And now this is what the application looks like. And you can see each time you click it, the color is going to be different. So that's about it for this video and it's just basically uh, it was very uh, basic introduction to using buttons and text views and I plan on making more videos uh, that go into depth and I'm probably going to make one about image views later on so that we can have images in our app and then um, eventually we'll get to more complicated things such as changing our theme colors over here, um, having menu options that way you can have like a settings icon over here or about app icon, having multiple different pages and going to different pages. But thank you for watching this video and I hope that you were able to learn from it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get updates when new tutorials are released and share the video with friends. I also plan on starting a mini series of short videos covering some useful topics and tasks in Android, so stay on the lookout for those. And for the next tutorial, I, as I mentioned, will work on the imagery. So happy coding from IJ Apps.